Welcome back to another episode of the Block Runner Podcast. I'm your host, William, always here with your co-host, Iman. Yo, yo, dude. On the sticks, we got TJ. Hello. No interview today, Iman. No interview. So our last interview was um, the on-chain monkey guy. That's right. Danny Yang. Which was very impressive. I feel like we've reached one of the pinnacles of like yeah. people we should target to, you know, who else is on our like hit list? Yeah. If we had like a top five you know, people were trying to like talk to in like the ordinals, like or Bitcoin space, I guess. Yeah. Like who would who would make your top five list? Oh, well, it would be Danny. Who else? Casey. Casey for sure. Benny. We've already. I we, know. Okay, we'll cross him off the list. Right. <laughs> who else? Uh. Who else? <laughs> I, maybe I, maybe I Trevor. Feel, I feel like having a conversation with Andreas Antonopoulos would be cool. Just. Just to kind of get his like opinion on what the f- I don't even know if he's, he's aware. He's not. I I pinged him on Twitter. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. He's, I, he's not on Twitter anymore. He's like I don't know. I guess he's just you know he made his bag and he's like I'm out, lads. You guys got it from here. Well, he's he all he talked about was Bitcoin, right? That's what I mean. So there wasn't much to talk about. I, but but that's my point. Now there's like so much to talk about. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's gonna enjoy <laughs> what's happening. I, I don't know because we we if you don't know you search our channel lads we actually did speak to Andreas Antonopoulos once we did and yeah we discussed obviously Bitcoin but we also discussed things like Ethereum uh-huh. which was kind of like in its yeah he I think he even wrote a book on Ethereum yeah so he's he's actually interested in these like ecosystem developments yeah I'm sure little did he know like an actual ecosystem would emerge on Bitcoin. I'm yeah. sure he was aware like there were attempts, but it all like migrated to Ethereum. Yeah, he did make a YouTube video talking about colored coins. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I would actually like to see that. Yeah. So, Pretty good. dude, he was on he would be on my top 5 cuz I want to know his like positioning and stance cuz what we were about to talk about like when you actually start to like unpackage what like the last 8 months or so that we've been like witnessing yeah. what's happening in this bitcoin space there's a legitimate like war happening i yes. mean okay maybe legitimate is a little overstatement <laughs> there's a war yeah economic <laughs> war yeah not a literal war happening but yeah. there's like a war of ideology maybe technical ideology well it's a battle of the invisible hand right it's like which where is it gonna go yeah, yeah of course because there's like there's a chart here and like we saw this on Twitter and like it just kind of like it really painted the picture to me like so like uh, what's the word perfectly like clearly like what's happening like damn yeah there's just so many options you uh, ignore the inscription thing <laughs> that's on a different chain but it's still like in line with what's kind of happening like there's all, so many new attempts at creating new value layers. Uh, you know, on top of Bitcoin that we haven't mm-hmm. seen before. Yeah. Specifically on Bitcoin, you have BRC twenties, you got pipe protocol, which you could also, I guess it is its own exclusive thing. You could add runes to that, which isn't on this like categories list yet. And this is weird because we're comparing random BRC 20 token market caps with like pipe. Well, I guess pipe is a fungible token market cap. We have Adam. Uh, yeah. Atomicals is another one. Atomicals, right. And, and then we saw Lightning Network here. And we're like, hold up, Lightning Network. Are they talking about Taproot assets? And they are. Yeah. There are actual Taproot assets yeah, like correct. deployed right now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's not many people talking about that, right? And then some of these that aren't on this list, like SRC20s with stamps, mm-hmm. I feel like is definitely worthy of being included on this list because there's a lot of validity to yeah. all of these different, like, uh, Token protocols, meta protocols, is what they call them. Yeah, correct. Right? Yeah, I mean it's it's wild to see. So that that, I guess we're like in this weird like infancy period where all of these attempts are valid, but again, the invisible hand hasn't like clearly decided yet. The the weird thing about the invisible hand is like it picks the winner in terms of like the volume of money flowing into that ecosystem, but. It doesn't only just pick one, right? All the boats here are going to rise, mm-hmm. right? But one boat is going to rise faster than the other. Mm. And that's because more human beings are in that ecosystem than others. Yeah, I guess at this stage, man. So it's like, <sighs> uh, so it's, it's, if you care about crypto or just interested in like the whole idea of it, it's good to know about what exactly is happening in all these ecosystems. And that's that's what we do. Like we did a, an eat description video, we did a pipe video, we talked about sats. 
I don't know if we talked specifically about Wardy, but it's not. It's just a BRC twenty in the first one. Yeah, I mean, Wardy was when we first discovered BRC twenty. That's true. Wardy was basically like standing alone in the market. Yeah, you know? atomicals. Kind of like what we're seeing in all these other, like competing, um, ecosystems. Like atomicals, you know, their their token, the atom token, is kind of like a standalone you know, face of the ecosystem, right? Right, right. Just how Ordy was in the beginning. Yeah, just like track is for well, track. You mean uh, pipe? Oh, well, pipe here, but track represents that ecosystem too. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, so so the point is, it's like, man, we're, we're kind of like struggling here a little bit just to kind of like keep up. Yeah. Because we thought there would be like a consolidation. Uh, at some point, there probably will be. And then we were kind of like discussing among ourselves, like, you know, if we were to make a prediction, which of these yeah. would win out? Yeah, th there's, yeah, because we were talking about uh, stamps. And uh, I have a tweet here by Mike in Space, the creator of stamps. And he's quote tweeting a Leonidas tweet. It says, Elon was right. High end digital art belongs on chain. Ordinal inscriptions on Bitcoin are the answer. And it says, here's an image where 100% of Ordinal's inscriptions are stored on Bitcoin, where 99% of NFTs are stored on. Amazon Web Services. Mm -hmm. And then it says, Mike in Space says, by far the most expensive way to store art is in bare multi-sig transaction outputs. But why would you want to pay more to store your art this way as opposed to the witness data? The answer, mm -hmm. persistence of data across every node. This is the basis of stamps. And so you could you could use ordinals and put it in into the uh, witness data, which is significantly cheaper, or you can use stamps and put it into the multi-sig transaction, yeah. which is more expensive, but non prunable And, and it's across every single node, not just some nodes. Yeah. So I like Mike and space here, like capitalizing on like, Oh, are you guys going to go all in on this? Oh yeah. You guys want artifacts? Yeah. You guys want to be sure. Yeah. You really want to emphasize this on chain narrative because Elon Musk went on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah. And clearly explicitly stated that as being the number one detractor to NFTs. Like, okay, well I'll see your on chain, like, you know, yeah. Information storage mechanic and I'll raise you. Yeah. <laughs> like a real one. And an even more like embedded version of that. So yeah. you can't exclude what's happening, you know, in this ecosystem from that discussion. Right. You know, Cause that's what I mean. Like this adds a whole new, like valid vector of uh, contention to, you know, what ordinals is Yeah, from a technical advantage perspective. Right. Yeah. And they, in, uh, stamps, they still use UTXOs. The same thing as ordinals is like, um, pretty much anything on top of Bitcoin uses UTXOs as a framework to, to do anything. The difference is, is that ordinals created this, uh, nomenclature for each Satoshi and it, it created sort of like an attractive narrative for, for people. Yeah. And then we're, yeah. So that was like the main, when you compare and align like all these different meta protocol standards to generate like a a tokenized environment on Bitcoin, <clears throat> you start to notice like ordinals does kind of stand out because of that. Yeah. This whole idea. And then we're like, well, what is it about that? That like makes it so like, we're all attracted to that narrative, the yeah. lore behind that. And, and I think it, it aligns with DMT. Yeah. It's not arbitrary. The same thing when we were trying to figure out like, why, why does that, why does bitmap like seem so intuitively yeah. attractive to us? You right. Know? Yeah, I, I totally agree. It it is it, that has to be the only explanation because each Bitcoin that enters in the ecosystem per block comes in a sequence, mm -hmm. and so Casey Ronimer just said, "Well, let's just put an ID system for that sequence, and let's let's attach data to each Satoshi." Yeah, and now we have a thing called ordinals. So, well, what about that specifically? Okay, it's like identifying a pattern, right? Mm -hmm. There's a chronology yeah. of like a yeah you know, uh, Satoshi ex introduction into the ecosystem. Yeah. That's something I can get like, again, attribute some new layer of, uh, value attribute identity assignment to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is a pattern thing. We're, we're talking about this earlier in like in extreme examples, like if humans weren't very good at patterns, we probably wouldn't even exist as long as we've had, <laughs> because for example, right. What if someone gets eaten by a lion? And without this pattern recognition, someone sees a different line somewhere else in a different location and they'd be like, well, let's see what this is. And then yeah. they get eaten again. Yeah. Right. Well, we're thinking like that's, well, yeah. Why do we appreciate just patterns in general? It's yeah. probably, yeah, it has to be like a survival mechanism that we've just adopted yeah. 
through the process of evolution, right? Our lineage of, I guess, thought patterns, the, 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 I guess, uh, the identification of patterns. And then I guess the responding, utilization. yeah, responding in, in, in context of them obviously contributed a lot to our survival in the wild as, of senses. Right. So yeah. it makes sense that we've kind of like, we intuitively kind of respect and, 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 you know, yeah, honor just appreciate, the appreciate the pattern. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, whenever you go to a website and they ask you to, they challenge you with a captcha, that's because a human can recognize the pattern of what is an image. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, click on the fire hydrant or the bicycles. Yeah. Right. Cause we can, we can recognize what that pattern is. Mm -hmm. A robot a AI will now, they can start recognizing those patterns. So those, this capture thing is about to get obsolete, mm -hmm. but, uh, but inherently we're built in with this pattern recognition that we attribute value to. And so Casey did that with ordinals, but Toshi did that with bitmap. We're talking about building a framework for DMT so that anybody can, can leverage this non-arbitrary aspect yeah. and pattern recognition. So what do you think is the likelihood of like this invisible hand? I mean, I guess they're already kind of showing a BRC 20s clearly has a lead, but there's first a little bit of first mover advantage to this. And, mm -hmm. but we have taproot assets kind of like eventually going to come in and, you know, make its uh, presence be known. Mm -hmm. Like despite it's like technical advantages, what do you think the market, you know? Well, taproot assets, you were explaining how it was that that's coming from like the Bitcoin core development, uh, team. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in my opinion, the Bitcoin core is just another creator on top of Bitcoin. Yeah. I don't know if it's like the actual Bitcoin core team, but mm. you know, lightning labs has been like a persistent initiative yeah. for a long time on Bitcoin. Yeah. So I the mean, lightning network specifically. Yeah. But they're, yeah, still right. They're, they're just another community member. Yeah. Right. Building. Yeah. And so even if they build something, it's still going to be left up to the invisible hand. Right. So I think the winner is going to be based on a narrative that people can just hit your wagon to. Yeah. Yeah, most likely. So <clears throat> let's see the BRC 20 space, man, I don't know. It's just, I guess because we, we talk about NATs and stuff a lot amongst yeah. ourselves and the fact that we really want to make this uh specific standard, kind of like a wrapper that's yeah. applicable and agnostic to like what Correct. we're seeing you know, from the technical meta protocol le uh, level itself, right? Because, you know, the introduction of more like DMT principles isn't like uh, some sort of like technical variant, right? No, it's not a competitor BRC20. It's not a, it's not its own standard. It's more of like a, a rethinking of how to create tokens based on non-arbitrary data. Yeah. So again, do you think you're going to see NATs on this list here? <laughs> Under Nostra, remember the, uh, the yeah. chart we were just looking at? NATs? Yeah. Um, I don't know, dude, because I feel like it's... <sighs> well, because here they're talking about a specific token, right? There's going to be a specific token that represents non-arbitrary tokens, mm -hmm. and that token will have, like, some sort of market cap, and, like, it'll be, you know, part of the list. Mm. Just like pipe, you can create pipe tokens, you can create different atomical tokens, um, you know, BRC20s. There are two BRC20s here. Yeah. Right? So there's going to be a non-arbitrary token represented here and it could be called anything, right? We don't know what it's going to be called. Yeah. So I guess it's kind of like, um, again, but see, these all have like pretty rich communities that are starting to like spin up and support yeah. of like, the, you know, cause it's, yeah, I mean, but that's the thing that we're, uh, that's, that's why we're so interested in what we're working on with DMT is like this new thing. It's not, you can't put it in a bucket. The yeah. bucket doesn't exist, right? It exists in the sense that ordinals exist, non-arbitrary. Bitmaps exist, non-arbitrary. That's those are the two, right? Rare sats can be considered non-arbitrary, mm -hmm. but the the bucket is very small, right? There's only three of them, right? And yeah. then DMT is going to come in and you know add to it. Yeah. So I mean, it's this is a uh, man. It's definitely different than I guess what we're used to on like Ethereum because yeah. there was already like a pretty set like uh, you know protocol sure. standards in place by the time we got there, started to develop for that ecosystem. Yeah. So do you think like, you know, I guess there's the, uh, technical advantages between these different, uh, meta protocols, you know, pi pipe is not necessarily part of tap. It's like, it's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, runes. It's, it's a rune. Yeah. Well, they're gonna have to develop like a whole new, like, uh, functionality enabling 
you know, component to that. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Runes versus BRC20 and pipe versus tap. It's, uh, it's going to have its own applications and usability. It's like, what if what if you consider the OP return of Bitcoin kind of like the cheaper uh scalable version of fungible tokens, mm -hmm. right? So maybe that's going to have some sort of application in in like project utility. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's a lot of um definitely opportunity here too cuz again, stamps should be on this list but for whatever reason like the the SRC20 tokens haven't like really exploded the way we've seen, you know, like the first token deployed on these ecosystems, like Atom, I think it's trading like around 30 million market cap now. Yeah. Most of the, and the pipe token itself, most of these tokens have already done basically like a thousand X, I would say. What was, roughly. Uh, what was the market cap of some of the SRC20 tokens? We're looking at like around 5 million ish. So market okay. cap as of recording this video, which today's the 14th, yeah. in case you guys don't know. By the time this video is out there, I mean, the price could be 50 10, 20 X by, by then. You yeah. never know. These markets move pretty unpredictably, you know? Yeah. yeah so, so yeah, there's, there's going to be competitors. I think, I think when it comes to like value attribution, it's, it's hard to predict which one's going to like win out. It's all about like community. Cause think about this. We had an entire cycle where everything was an arbitrary token, mm -hmm. right? So we, it was very hard to kind of predict where that invisible hand was going to select. Yeah. And so now with this idea of like non-arbitrary tokens, like with bitmap and all that, I feel like you can start having a higher probability of what's going to be sticking and what's not. Mm. Right. Because bitmap has like a very strong community. They have very strong convictions that these things are valuable. Yeah. And those are strong convictions based on what exactly. But I feel like each of these communities have strong convictions. Well, because they are holding a bag. Yeah. Right? You could say that bitmap holders are have strong convictions because they're holding bitmap. Yeah, and that's kind of what I mean by but, like... But I think there's an added component to it, right? Like the value attribution to a bitmap. Well, that's why we're, we're kind of identifying it. Like it has to be the DMT thing because... Yeah, I feel like that's the newness thing, and that's going to be what's I think attractive to like a much more broader demographic. Sure, yeah, because it, it feels like a little bit like it's tapping into some sort of primal exactly. region of our brain. Yeah, yeah. Again, the pattern recognition thing. Yeah, that for one, like that's the newness that hasn't been really utilized before in Web three. Yeah, and again, it's aligned with possibly like our just our natural inclinations. It's like yeah, we need we should be sourcing you know patterns for new value creation mechanisms, right? Instead yeah. of like this, this spinning out of thin air. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it has to be tapping into like that primal aspect of our brain in order for it to like click. Resonate. People. Resonate. Resonate, yeah. Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think I can make a prediction like that. I think all these ecosystems will have like... Their place? Yeah, like some play. Kind of like what we saw with L ones was like, you know, avalanche, mm, yeah. Solana, yeah. they all pretty much boomed and busted. Right. Yeah. And they're still around too. They're all still around, like hovering around, but I don't think any of them are, in my opinion, going to really either catch up or pass up what Ethereum offers, even though they might be like technically superior, better for like the user demographic. I agree. I don't, I don't see that happening either. You don't think so? I don't, I don't see like avalanche flipping Ethereum. Yeah. There are people out there saying it could though. Yeah, but they they also said Ethereum was going to flip Bitcoin. True. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking this is going to play out similarly. Like, you're going to have pl plenty of different meta protocol ecosystems, developers building for each of them, you know, very, like, mirrored products and protocols yeah. that look very similar to one another. Yeah. You know, communities that have deep conviction for all of them, but ultimately, I don't think, I think already Ordinals is going to win out just because, you know, it's the first, like, utilizer of, of DMT principles. Yeah. Right. Something that we're identifying and slapping like an umbrella name for like this, this, uh, yeah. Cause we're trying to figure out, I was like, what is it about ordinals? It's like, we're, we're, you know, it has to be this DMT aspect. Like, what is it about rare sats? What is it about bitmap? Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it all goes back to like this, this pattern recognition process that humans have been doing for thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I am a little bit, 
interested to see like what goes on with taproot assets just because of a uh, yeah and, and it's this is in the face of like you know a potentially superior protocol in stamps where it's basically information that's not prunable because it's on every single node instead of some nodes mm -hmm. right if you really care about the provenance of art being on chain well then you're going to care about b that art being on every single node mm -hmm. not on some nodes or most nodes yeah right so that's the position that stamps is in and although this is like technically better it's one it's more expensive and mm -hmm. two you know it doesn't have like that pattern process yeah <laughs> so that's i guess our assessment and um yeah i guess our attempt to try and understand and like create like an explanation for what we're seeing. Right. Cause yeah. yeah, you would expect like, I guess like a technically su like superior, you know, meta protocol to, to gain the most adoption and therefore like the most you know liquidity and all that stuff, mm -hmm. like everything that these markets appreciate, but that's not always the case. Yeah. Right. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built Mscribe, the first inscription platform built from the ground up for the metaverse on Bitcoin. Connect your bitmap ordinals and use our tools to bring your community into the virtual realm. Support us by joining the movement at mscribe.io. Like, comment, and subscribe for the latest alpha. Back to the video. So, yeah, I guess in the context of that, I mean, again, we that's not to say we're only going to like exclusively cover what's happening on ordinals. I feel no. like everything deserves a fair shot. Yeah. Everything I mean, deserves a fair, like dude, stamps could do a thousand X. Right. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's better than ordinals or has more liquidity than ordinals. It's just kind of exploded. And then for whatever reason, just maybe it doesn't catch on or I don't know. So what do you think about taproot assets? So same thing, taproot assets, same, same thing. It's like, it's going to be probably a more superior protocol for one reason or another. But I don't know if it has the same sort of attraction. Yeah, the resonance thing. Yeah. That's really what's in question here because we, we really talk about a lot of like physics stuff, resonation, re resonating, uh, um, just like non arbitrariness, like the pattern recognition. Digital matter. Yeah, digital matter. Well, where do you think that's coming into play? <laughs> Where's that coming from? I mean, I didn't, I, I did go to school for physics, I, you know. You well, did you. no, it's not physics but it's like science and yeah well, science is not arbitrary it just is what it is well i think a lot of that has to do also with like our fixation on this metaverse space yeah trying to create again like a whole new virtual existence layer so i don't know injecting a little bit of like physical properties into sure. that like manifestation kind of makes sense it does and in, in a way it's like uh yeah you know let's let's pull in someone like the uh the things that worked out, I guess, in our physical reality, bring yeah. it to the digital. You know? Yeah, because we're here in a non-arbitrary sense. Like, it, it could be the right sort of like dials and 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 knobs that the conditions on Earth, uh, you know, enable life, right? And so we're trying to recreate those conditions in, in the digital sense. Yeah. So so yeah, this is uh this is uh, you know I, who who did this this uh, image here. I don't know if this person actually did it or it says insight news, insight right there. news. Yeah. This is a good depiction of like what exactly is happening. And then you discover this Noster thing, treat and trick. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Well, again, these are the taproot assets, dude. So okay, this so. would be like, I guess this is like a dual. So, but what about dual drop? So Noster is just a, like a, a name. It's like the Unisat from what I've seen. So we're going to obviously do like some deep dive videos on this yeah, in the future. This is, this is interesting because Noster, I, I believe they were using Noster for like communication. Well, like, yeah. Noster is like a whole technology. decentralized like platform for, I think, building like communication layer. Yeah. So you could build things like a decentralized Twitter. So in this such. case, is this the name of a token or what? It's You can look it up. Dude, right now, Noster Assets. That's just oh, yeah, the name yeah, of a platform. There it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. Scroll through that. So here's a little bit of like a sneak peek or like it's not a sneak like this thing is peekable <laughs> you could just look at it now go to mainnet.noster assets this was deployed on halloween okay. hence trick and treat you know those were like the first deployed tokens here uh, so first but, asset management platform powered by noster protocol oh that's interesting secured by lightning network connect noster to start managing your assets so they must have their own wallet as install well. the all be extension on your chrome Okay. All right. So then we have 
Here we have sats. We have that's it, treat dude. Treat and trick. See, that's this is what I mean. Like, it, <laughs> the, yeah, this feels like Taproot Assets is probably like the most closely aligned, like meta protocol initiative to the Bitcoin Core ecosystem. Just because, yeah, you know, a lot of like what brought um the Taproot upgrade. I think the considerations of it, why the core community of developers decided to integrate it into the Bitcoin Core code, yeah was to support the Lightning Network, I think, and the adoption of it, right? Oh, okay, okay. So now that they're building, like, a whole meta protocol on Lightning Network, it, it kind of makes, it, it feels like if, if there is, like, an industry label to, like, Bitcoin, yeah, like, outside of, like, Satoshi, and, like, you know, what what is kind of, like, aggregated on top of Bitcoin, yeah. through history's past, you know, like, the Lightning Labs and the industry around that feels like that would be it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that there's, like, a meta protocol on the horizon... Like a token issuance system, yeah, <laughs> closely aligned, I guess, to like what I label as the industry of Bitcoin. For one, it's something that cannot be ignored, right? Period. Like yeah. we have to at least see what's happening there. Yeah, I agree. And this is this is gonna be the ultimate test of this this invisible hand thesis, right? Is the are we, are they gonna care? Yeah. Like there's like such industry support for this ecosystem and uh, technical advantages because it's on a scalable network. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, all these things matter is what I'm. It's kind of like the question I'm getting at. Or it's like, screw all that, dude. We like ordinals because of uh, you know, it taps into our monkey brain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. The pattern stuff. Yeah. The DMT stuff. Even though, like, man, it's painful to use. What do you think of this, dude? What are you looking at? Uh, well, I'm looking at um. So they have a marketplace here where you can dabble into this ecosystem, and they have treat as the token. Yeah, so this is very like Unisat esque, right? Yeah, they have like this ID system here, hmm. right? And then so they have a price, two hundred sixty five Sats per token, right? This is roughly nine cents per token. They're selling a thousand tokens here, ninety three bucks for a thousand tokens. Okay, ninety three bucks. And then so someone here is selling two thousand, some some sixteen oh six. So, so very, can we do can we do like a rough um, napkin math of the market cap if we go back to like. So let's go, How to, many, go we, to the Explorer. How many tokens total? Sorry, let's go to the assets. For treat is, doesn't say. I think hover over something around there. Right this there? One. It says total supply, copy 100,000. I can't be right. Maybe under, hover over the thing on the right, like amount, maybe? Oh, hold on. Oh, it's 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 my copy. Oh, there it is. So this is 2.1 billion. This is 210 million. So 210 million times 9 cents. Let's round it up to 10 cents. Okay, so let's do that. Which math. is, isn't that 21 million? Yeah. So damn, dude. It's, it already has a market cap of 21 million. Wait. Yeah, you're right. So treat is. Uh, yeah, by the way, like, <laughs> we yeah. just discovered 20, 21 million dollars? That's crazy. Yeah, uh, so we just discovered this last night. So forgive us for our like, oh, we're just like in real time. Yeah, you know, discovering here yeah. these uh, taproot assets. But that's a pretty big market cap. They're asking twenty one million dollars market cap, and I think people are actually like buying these stuff, these things at this market cap. So wow, this is what I mean by this is not something to fade <laughs> and ignore. Yeah. If these things come off the rip, like, well, they're probably trading much lower. Like, cause remember, these were released a couple weeks ago on Halloween. It's true. So there, there's an active market here. You know, there's something happening. It cannot be faded. You know, uh, we again, we don't know. This we is why. Yeah, try not to fade anything because that's how you miss out. Yeah. See, Will is full engaged now. This is, I, I, I see that glimmer in his <laughs> eye. He's like, what's something interesting is happening here. Oh, right? look at this that oh these are sats one sat is like oh it's a new token yeah interesting so no this is treat so treat was 0. 0.0003 cents oh shit it did 100x already dude no freaking way so that was like the uh i yeah, guess this so is october, it only cost one sat to inscribe how, how many this is october 30th 10,000? You inscribe 10,000 treats for one sat? There's no fucking way, dude. <laughs> Actually, that makes sense, don't it? Oh, well, this was canceled. All right, let's go to the next one. All right. Filled. Oh, so it was seven cents. 
Uh, ten cents. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> stay tuned to our actual like deep dive analysis because we obviously need to do a little bit more uh, due diligence on this. So I, I'm thinking it it launched pretty close to 21 million uh, market cap and it stayed. It's still there. Really? Yeah. Because they're selling right now for nine cents. Yeah. So the the price hasn't really moved much. Yeah. At all. Interesting. So there really isn't enough. Like here we go, three cents. The price kind of like dumped a bit. Yeah. Seventeen cents sell. Damn, this guy made out. It's quite some. It's quite a lot of variance here between there prices. Is. Yeah, but that's that's how it is, right? Each one is like sort of like an NFT, and you sell what you got, and that's about it. Yeah. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built MetaZone, the first app store for the metaverse. Buy, sell, and explore a new class of digital assets like our flagship game, Rovi.ai. Support us by collecting your digital assets through MetaZone at MetaZone.io. Like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated. Back to the video. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so that that's this is part of like trying to learn what's, what's happening in the ecosystem. It's, it's a lot to keep up with. The it's fact that we're able to do what we can is pretty amazing yeah it's non-stop and it's happening across the board again like uh even dogenals shout oh, out yeah. to the, the doge yeah where's ecosystem. that on this chart dude it's not here it's not not it, on bitcoin not yet but they're they're native i guess their their flagship coin i think it's called doji yeah also did like a magnificent run i think the last i looked at it was hovering around a million market cap one million yeah now it's around like 11 or 12 oh, okay <laughs> Respectable, dude. That's a respectable market cap. You know, yeah. it, should, it should be on this list for sure. But um, so this thing is expanding, right? We're getting more and more of these meta protocol, yeah, like participants. Yeah. So you know? what's the difference between Bitcoin and like something like Doge and Dogeinals and all that? Is that it's or, Bitcoin or Ethereums or Ethereums? Well, it's Bitcoin again. Yeah, but Ethereum is still Ethereum. Sure. You know, they're saying Ethereum is going to get their ETF moment too, like imminent. Yeah. They, yeah. Like, Rock right, doing it. Yeah, exactly. So it's like Ethereum, Bitcoin, they're pretty much in the same camp. Yeah. Exclusive. Well, camp. The, I mean, those are blue chips, right? As blue as they get. I mean, if you're going to pick one blue chip, though, which one is it, though? <laughs> well, I feel like that might be debatable, but. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, it is debatable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they're both like Boomer products, you know, Boomer accessible. <laughs> yeah, you get both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's, yeah. you know, hedge against one another, you know, 60 40 allocation, maybe. Yeah. 60% Bitcoin, 40% Ethereum, and uh, I'm fulfilling my boomer responsibilities by hedging and, you know, being yeah. a responsible, yeah. you know, Future. 401k manager. It's not <laughs> very crypto friendly of you, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all in, dude. Well, why the fuck do you think we're talking about this shit? It's like, this is really, <laughs> now this is the stuff that we like, right? We're not. Yeah, this is definitely fringe. This I'm, is I'm not buying Bitcoin. Furthest from <laughs> boomer activity. Yeah, I'll tell you that straight up, dude. I'm not buying Bitcoin to hold Bitcoin. I've never done that in my life. You obviously have. I mean, you should just like buy it and hold it forever, right? This is like the most valuable asset Snooze humanity fest. has ever okay. created. Okay. From and the you're going to like <laughs> flip it? Get out of here, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I'm gonna flip it, dude. That's that's where all the action and fun is at, you know? Like and that's been my basically my career in Web3 is <laughs> I never bought Ethereum to buy and hold either. I, I was onboarded onto Ethereum because I was interested in all yeah. the different things, like the ICOs and yeah and such that I could, you know, I didn't get to participate in because US yeah, citizen. Yeah, you're American, dude. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I live in the land of cuckery. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wanted that Ethereum so that I could you know, participate in the market, it's, you know, the secondary market of all these ERC 20 tokens, right? Yeah. I only buy Bitcoin to participate in the secondary market of BRC 20 or atomicals well, or pipe or I'm oh. not saying don't do that. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, save like 10% into Bitcoin. Why? There's no 10% is not going to change anything. I don't know. I and guess we, it's like a just, dude, just what if case. that ETF like turns, you know, one Bitcoin to a million bucks. Wow. Right. And you've accumulated 10% out, out of your history in crypto, right? You know, something that we kind of missed from the last cycle that happened in the first is like Bitcoin. <laughs> it was a weird like rhythm between like Bitcoin, when Bitcoin surged, yeah. like all the liquidity exited alts and went into straight into Bitcoin anytime that was happening. Well, you, you know why though, right? Finance. Um, yeah. Everything like was 
Paired pegged. to Bitcoin. That's right. Yeah. So, but that didn't happen last cycle because of stable coins, right? Because of stable coins and automated market makers. Yeah, and exactly. So it was Swapping, more DeFi and all this stuff. Smoother, I guess. Yeah. We have like a decoupling. You're right. Yeah. So I was going to say like this time around in, in the event of, I don't know, a million dollar Bitcoin, there could be like a mass exodus from yeah the ordinals ecosystem into Bitcoin, but probably not. Probably no, not. I don't no. think so. I don't think that's ever going to happen again. Well, there's going to be an exit to a stable coin, yes. Well, yeah. So the market cap of a stable coin is going to go up significantly. It always does, dude. It's called Tether. Like, they just yeah. print infinitely. Well, it's it's fine that they print it as yeah. long as they back it. Yeah. Right? right. I guess. I guess so. But uh, I don't know. But yeah, you're right. I, it was easy to, like, you know, once Bitcoin got to $20,000, you put it all into Ethereum. That goes up 150x. Yeah. And then you, you sell that into something else. I don't know. Definitely different times, dude. Different times for sure. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess I'm just trying to like predict the future here. Like what is this bull cycle going to look like? And I think, yeah, all these are going to have some play again. I mean, there's I, <laughs> one of the main value or one of the main like sexy points, I guess, the why we're so focused on the Bitcoin ecosystem is it's like it's the most liquid rich. Right. Well, that and it's never. Well, I wouldn't say it's well, never I, happened before, but not like this. Yeah, but, but but the question is, in my mind at least, is there enough capital to go around for all these meta protocol ecosystems? Like basically, like it, well, whenever be. the next bull cycle ends, will they? Will all of these still exist? Plus more. I, well, they will exist because they're protocols, so you can use them or not use them, right? But, well. Well, they have like communities yeah. and like activity and all that. Exists Probably the, not. Exists in the sense that like the layer ones that emerged last cycle exist today, right? Like some of them are still like multiple billion dollar ecosystems. Actually, m most of them are. A lot of yeah. them are. But they they exist because they're solving a market issue like scalability. It's like we need a, a blockchain for, for games, right? Yeah, but each of these have like technical viability to yeah. them, solving some kind of if, pain point. If they solve a pain point, yes, they will exist. Yeah. Oh, then that means they all will. Like right? Atomicals, you know, has their own. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, they're yeah so like Ordinals is like a blue chip sort of a PFP platform, right? Wow. Right? Yeah. Because you you can only exist on, on Bitcoin in a like sustainable sense if people are willing to pay thousands of dollars per transaction. Yeah. Right? <laughs> But you can't do that in a game economy, right? Yeah. But you'll use uh, runes or you'll use stacks to enable your market. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, Ordinals is going to be like the Bitcoin of meta protocols. Like it's going to be the everyone's going to refer to it as like it's the blue chip the, assets. The, well, the dinosaur. Like it's the least robust. It's the slowest. The most, most expensive. Yeah, things like this, right? Yeah. But therefore, it's going to be the most valuable. Yeah, but, but it's, people are going to say like you're not you're not supposed to build like consumer apps on ordinals. Sure. Yeah. You know, you, you need to be building that on stacks, like some layer two. Like that's what's happening on Ethereum, right? Well, yeah. Because, you don't build consumer facing apps on Ethereum. Layer yeah, one. because for Web two, every click that we do in Web two, it doesn't cost us money, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. So if you're gonna build like like an NFL rivals, like a game. Yeah that people are actually downloading on their phone, millions of people. Yeah. And they're actually like, you can hide all the web three stuff on the back end. Right. And like the, the consumers don't even realize like they're, you know, engaged in a web three ecosystem yeah. that can only be achieved on, you know, something that's scalable. Like sure. for the, in that case, isn't that on polka dot? That is on polka yeah. dot. Yeah. And we yeah. have experience. We, we use polka dot yeah. a couple of days ago. Yeah. It was mind blowing how fast that was. Instantaneous. And they're covering the minimal gas fee that they charge you, so you literally see none of it. As as they should. I mean, we did that for po Polygon assets through Biconomy, right? Yes. Yeah. So that is going to become like a standard, you know, UX. Yeah. Expectation in Web three, but again, it's uh, a customer acquisition cost. It's a cost of doing business, like all that stuff, which. Yeah. It's fine. Reduce the friction so that your customers can go and, and do whatever it is that they want. Interesting. Damn, yeah. This is looking more and more obvious to me. Like, I mean, it always has, but now, now I'm starting to, like, really see, like, this uh, bull market play out. Yeah. For sure, Ordinals is going to explode first because it has to. It has to set yeah. the ground layer of, like... Yeah, there's so many... There's 40 million Ordinals. 
Yeah. You don't think that's going to like pique people's interest? Like what the hell is happening? And well, we got to get people into this ecosystem. Yeah. Interested all these faders. Cause there's for whatever reason, there's obvious like indication ordinals is should not be faded. Yes. Such as like, you know, volume and such like, you know, competing with Ethereum yeah. in real time for more than just a day, like right. a whole week of competitiveness. Like, yeah. Bitcoin is, has surpassed Ethereum and NFT sales. I like, don't know how that's not like hitting everybody's like front desk. Yeah. CNBC should be like, yeah, what's going on guys. Well, even more like zoomed in, like we know a lot of other like founders who yeah. founding projects on Ethereum yeah, or who founded projects on Ethereum and I think they've been made aware of like what something is happening on Bitcoin. Yeah. It's just easier not to pay attention, dude. That's that's it. <laughs> it's like I'm I'm in my comfy environment. I don't want to like alter my comfy environment for something that's happening. I don't know, dude. That's shocking cuz we made this leap in absence of any of that like that's evidence true. supporting evidence that like this is going to work out. Cuz Bitcoin, dude. I guess. And you know what? We've been having this dialogue for a number of years now. And like, we've, we've already like mentally have a position in like, in terms of value. And when we first heard there was NFTs on Bitcoin, we were like, excuse me? Yeah. Like instantly, because I think we have a consistent dialogue, but other people, that's true. Other people don't have this dialogue. And when they hear something new, like NFTs on Bitcoin, they just kind of blow it off just because they don't have like, yeah. A lot of it is bag bias. Yeah, that like, too. You know, if you're already so vested on like, you know, other ecosystems from other L1s, it's kind of like, it's more in your best interest to kind of like focus on how do I bring more value and more appreciation of what I'm already vested into, I guess. Because, well, to pump my bags. It's um, hope. Yeah. Well, you it's, can't control somebody else's project, right? Yeah, it, I guess. And it's just kind of like, yeah, I don't want to surrender my position to kind of like, you know, traverse yeah. to a whole new one. I had to like, that's like yeah, a whole new unproven learning. unproven one. Yeah, it's a whole new learning curve. Now I have yeah. to relearn this whole new chain. But I feel like that's not an excuse. Dude. Like It's Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I Who agree. Who cares? I agree. However much learning it takes, it's going to yeah. be worth it, I yeah. feel like. 100%. Yeah. That's the lesson that we learned early on when we faded Bitcoin like, on day one. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you never fade anything new, especially when it has traction. Yeah. Yeah, now there's, but that's my point. Yeah. Now there's proof of traction. Yeah. And you're still fading it. And, and that's, that's on not, you. I feel like the majority, like if you go on YouTube. Yeah. Very few are look, talking about this. You look for ordinals and if we show up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do that experiment <laughs> right now, dude. And to me, it's still a little mind Google. blowing. It, it made sense. Like when we, what, what should we search? Uh, I don't know. Bitmap video. Well, okay. This makes sense. Okay. So they're talking about bitmap. Uh, let's do bitmap ordinals. There hey, that's us, Bitmap dude. Well, you know. Yeah, that's us, us, us. Okay, Bitmap is a little okay, not so fair. Let's, let's do just do ordinals. Ordinals, okay. Let's do videos. Oh, not us. Yeah, okay, ordinals wallet. <laughs> How to get started. Oh, new, not us. Yeah. Uh, not us either. Not us. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is not true. Maybe it's the awareness is starting to spread. Yeah, maybe so. Which is good. But typically, okay, leading up to now, it's like mostly the big influencers that I, that I am aware of who kind of like galvanized and led a lot of interest in the last cycle. Yeah. So when you drill in past the ordinals concept <laughs> and it's us. Right. Which, and, uh, yeah, we got Ordinal's Revolution. So, like, there's only a handful, I think, of, like, dedicated, yeah, like, entities, whatever you want to call, label a channel like us. Fucking, I don't know, educators. Yeah. Influencers. Nah. There's only a handful of us, dude. It's which weird. It's mind-blowing to me because there's so many crypto influencers on Twitter and on YouTube. Yeah, and they're whatever. still talking about like Ethereum updates, like just standard DeFi, like new activity. They're talking about like games and shit. Yeah. I mean, which, which is fun. I mean, I guess it makes sense too. <laughs> Gaming is a big fucking deal. So I feel like, I, I think what we're trying to get at from an absolute perspective, you look at all of crypto, including Bitcoin, like where is all the action in the attention? Or, or where, where is all the action happening? 
I feel like it's happening on Bitcoin. Man, we might have some, we might be victim of like some serious bias here. I don't know. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm talking about like, try to be objective as possible. Cause right now the I'm charts, trying, the I'm charts trying. say yeah. for NFT activity, it's Bitcoin. That, okay. That's true. Right. That's maybe we need to uh, bring we up, do this. Can we bring up one of those charts? Yeah. Just let me, like so support? let's go to Trevor. Uh, Twitter. And let's go. So Trevor has a chart here. There's a lot of ninjas, dude. <laughs> dude I need, my, with I the need ninjas. my ninja turtles, dude. Yeah, dude, Trevor, if you watch if you're watching us or if somebody wants to there clip this, dude, I mean these ninjas would look really nice on the Block Runner channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So here's a screenshot. It's like blockchains by NFT sales volume in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin has 17 million in 24 hours and Ethereum 12. Yeah. So, and then if some of the big, okay. the no, Yeah. The, look at, look at Polygon, dude. What is happening? <laughs> I don't know, dude. But again, so in context of this, okay. These aren't the, the biggest USD like values yes. we've seen. Maybe that has something to do with it. We're, we're a, well, it's called, called a bear market. Exactly. Hmm. I don't know. So objectively, we're trying to be as objective as possible here. It's like, why are people not just like converting over in droves? Like, oh, well, I think our prediction is they will. They just don't know it yet. Okay, then what what has to happen? I feel like we had this discussion. Remember, like, yeah, that's true. What does we happen? talked we talked about this when we were like first getting into NFTs, and we were like wondering why isn't everybody, yeah, yeah, like as excited that's or true. like and paying attention to NFTs the way we are. Right? Do they not see it? <laughs> you don't remember? That's true. I I do remember that. Yeah, we used to have like roundtable discussions in Decentraland talking about this very thing, and we were like just sitting there. So where is everybody? <laughs> 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 it's like, why is there only like 10 of us showing up into this and like, you know, flexing our art with, on each other? Yeah. Like, why isn't everybody doing this? And little did we know, like within like eight months of those discussions, like everybody was. Right. Everybody. everybody. Paris Hilton, Snoop Dogg. Dude, I was getting Eminem. Like, I was getting hit up by people from high school I've been talked to in like a decade. Yeah. And it's like, it's like. He's like, tell me more about this NFT thing. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that had to have been like the most top indicator of, of top indicators. Yeah. But the point is, yeah. So we're kind of like reliving that experience again here on Ordinals. Like, dude, it seems so obvious to us. Yeah. I think because it's obvious to us, it'll catch on in about eight months. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's our prediction, dude. It's like, we're, this feels like deja vu, glitch in the matrix type shit. 100%. You know, but, but okay. But back then we were like, I remember some of my answers whenever we were having this podcast discussion. It was like somebody is going to need to like buy a like a fucking Ferrari or Bugatti. Mm. Like, oh, gonna that's have to, right. I remember that. Remember? Yeah. Because you asked, like, what's it going to take? It's like some, somebody has to, a headline has to go out there, like some random kid and, and some random game in crypto yeah. sold his sword yeah. and bought a fucking $500,000 Ferrari with it yeah. or a million dollar Bugatti or something like that. Yeah, with an then, NFT, and then people start doing their research. It's like, <laughs> yeah. how do I get? I want one of these swords. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And guess what? That actually happened. Yeah, there are tons of examples of people who flipped NFTs and bought they did, yeah. supercars and fucking million dollar mansions and yeah. such. And that's t that is so. I was right. Yeah. It's gonna take shit like that, you know. And maybe we're not there yet. Like we've had some big ordinal sales. Yeah, thirty thousand dollars for one bitmap. A bitmap sell for thirty grand. I think we saw some Bitcoin rocks go for like two or three Bitcoin. Yeah. So we're getting there. Right. Yeah. But this uh, is definitely not Ferrari money. Yeah. Yeah. But this definitely makes me like more comfortable. Now I know exactly where we're sitting in the market cycle. Yeah. So I mean all we in, got about right? eight, eight months, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Set your timers, guys. Eight eight to twelve months. So what is it? What's the target? Eight months from now is June? June, July. It's ordinal summer, dude. Right after the fucking happening, dude. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. It's coming, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, ordinal summer. I think that's gonna be it. All right, TJ, what are you gonna do there, dude? I'm gonna be on the marketplace for a Bugatti. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, dude. You're gonna cash in your uh your ETH? Uh, no. Never, never sell the ETH. We'll only hold in stake. <laughs> <laughs> hold in stake. 
Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's gonna happen, dude. Fuck. Oh yeah, definitely. It's always like kind of like trippy to think about. It's like, how how do we see it before everybody else? I mean that that is the whole point of like I guess our existence, our entertainment, our entertainment value as like yeah. a, as a channel. Yeah, it's like yeah. being able to predict these things and being right. Yeah, but we don't like to be so. I guess. I feel like we don't boast enough about this. No, <laughs> is it, you know why? It's because we don't take selfies with our Ferraris and stuff. Well, we don't have <laughs> Ferraris. For what? Let's be very clear. Well, we could just go to the <laughs> the dealership and just take a selfie at least. <laughs> we could, because yeah, I mean, we have evidence that and we're not just bullshitting here. We were like, we literally yeah. saw these like these fucking boats coming multiple times. Yeah, and uh, we're telling you guys, dude, we see another boat. On the horizon, like a big fucking boat. Yeah. But last time around, we weren't able to slap like an actual USD. We didn't know it was going to be a $60 billion boat. Yeah. Like for the NFT cycle. We had no idea. We just thought like at some point, a lot of people were going to care about these things. And yeah, you know, there's going to be a bull market. As no, no way we could have predicted 60 billion. Yeah. So uh, at least a $60 billion boat's coming to Bitcoin <laughs> is my, is my yeah. assessment. And when I say 60 billion, that's not like a market cap. That's like how much volume or like revenue or something like that was like a yeah. revenue metric for like the NFT space in general. Like that was just like sales of NFTs. So at peak, Ethereum got to $600 billion in market cap. Mm. So 60 billion is 10% of that. Imagine we go to Bitcoin and we do 10% of the same thing. Um. So let's let's assume in the last cycle, right, in 2021, we had ordinals, right? And in ordinals, we had roughly a $1.2 trillion market cap. So we're talking about $120 billion worth of NFT volume or revenue yeah. on Bitcoin. Jesus. Like if if you know we were on a different timeline. Yeah. 120 that's double. Double what happened on Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. Fuck. <clears throat> All right, sorry, double what happened on Ethereum. Yeah. I guess it's all starting to hit me, dude. <laughs> you feel it, dude? Do you feel that you've that euphor- euphoria coming? I do for some reason. I didn't uh, really feel it. It's really hard to like Oh, that last oh, time. Oh, I know no. why. It's cuz we're in that fucking disbelief phase of of the market psychology, remember? Are we in disbelief? Bring up that cheat sheet. <laughs> Now we're going super off script here just because I mean there is no script, but we wanted to talk a little bit more about bitmaps and such, but I don't know. I'm really just trying to like get my finger on the pulse of like where we are and where we're headed. Right. Like, yeah, because this is a big deal. Like, you know, it's, it feels like there's like a perfect storm brewing here from like a market perspective. Look at that disbelief. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like right. what I've been feeling. It's like, yeah, you're right. So we're going to, we're going to go down here like from, from the value perspective and then explosion after having <laughs> explosion. I mean, it, it sounds so cliche to like literally lay out like that as if we have like a Clio crystal ball. Well, this market psychology cheat sheet exists for a reason. Yeah, I know. We didn't do this. That's what I mean. It's like, yeah, we're not we're not making this up. Yeah. This is very predictable, like human psychology here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So So only up from here is what you're saying. Well, oh, first, a small dip. First, <laughs> first dip, <laughs> then up. Yeah. First dip, dude. We're calling it a little dip. Yeah. And then so that that's you know this is primarily why I think we're gonna see like twenty nine thousand dollar Bitcoin again in the short term, possibly. That is and the probably. last time we will see a twenty thousand dollar Bitcoin ever, ever. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, dude. Think about that. Remember, because when we hit, when we hit uh after being at thirty five hundred dollar Bitcoin when we started the podcast. Mm-hmm. After it hit like ten thousand dollars, I said we'll never see three thousand dollars again. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You were right. You were definitely right, dude. We had other people like panicking, saying we're for sure we're getting back there. You were saying we were gonna see a thousand dollar Bitcoin. <laughs> other people, dude. What do you, you mean? were saying? That. No, there were others out there. I would never say <laughs> such a thing. <laughs> my predictions aren't that off, you know. Yeah, I told you I would like sell my my laptop to get a thousand dollar Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean I'm not gonna lie, like these these macro markets have been much more like, um, They're volatile. No, like they held up 
way better than I was expecting. You remember? Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, yeah we were expecting an apocalypse of like financial yeah. proportions. A financial apocalypse. And we were yeah. like assuming at some point like some wars would break out and like they actually did. They did, yeah. And then really like the Bitcoin is still, ch- like, still going. Yeah, that kind of makes me... Uh, I don't know. I don't want to pivot into doom discussion. Let's not do that. Why would that make worry you though? Well, cuz I mean the whole the whole like thesis was like, "Oh, let's see how Bitcoin does in, in context yeah. of like an actual macro and like disaster." We've seen a pandemic. Yeah. Once in a 100 years it happened to us, mm-hmm. right? In our our lifetime. Yeah. And then we've seen multiple wars. Yeah, we're seeing printing of fiat currency up the ass. Yes. And I think the inflation numbers are actually going down. Yeah. So it's like a lot of like the Federal Reserve, I guess, hey, like response is actually. Uh, you know what's interesting? Um, I, f- I think it was Axie made who made a tweet and it was like, you know what? Bitmap is disinflationary. Mm-hmm. I was like, wait a minute. It's like, how? And it's like every time there's a new bitmap, the denominator keeps getting bigger. But the numerator, which is the new entrance of oh, yeah. Bitmap, stays the same for infinity. So like compounds in the opposite yeah. direction. So the inflation rate actually goes down mm. into the future. Yeah. And so, then yeah. and then our fiat inflation is is three percent. But it's three percent of what? Right? The current <laughs> supply of money. Yeah. And so in the future it's still three percent. Hey, inflation didn't go up, but technically we're printing way more money in the future than we are today. Yeah. Like that's insane. Hey man, it's working. <laughs> let it let it let it rip is what <laughs> you know. <laughs> as long as we get to k- kick the cans and you know keep, dude, keep dude, think <laughs> think about that though. We have a diverging <laughs> charts. Yeah. Right? We got bitmap and like Bitcoin getting disinflationary, and then we have we have like the value of the, the dollar exponentially getting less valuable. Yeah. Exponential. Ag- agreed. Now you're starting to sound like a maxi here, dude. A laser eye, <laughs> right? So, you know, fucking activate the sofons, dude. You don't want to. You don't want to yeah. conflate that that narrative in any sense. It's like, oh yeah, I hear your deflationary sound money, but uh, I can't even move it, dude. Yeah, it's I can't even buy shit with it. You know, you you. It's full of fucking monkeys <laughs> <Yeah>. and. <laughs> And fucking uh, frogs and shit. Yeah. You know, you're telling me like this little sat that I'm sending, you know, to my uh, family across the planet. It's got like embedded whatever the fuck's yeah. on it. Like, yeah. I don't want that. Shit pictures. Yeah. So. Yeah. What do you say to that? <laughs> well, what I say is like, well, we're increasing the security of Bitcoin. Oh, wow. You sound like Danny, dude. <laughs> 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 it's true, though. But yeah, so that's going to be, man. These are all sound. These are good narratives. Like this is a good. This is good. Like you know, you want to have these types of discussions publicly and open, openly, and yeah, you know, have everybody kind of like you know, think about this. Like yeah, okay, it might not. It has some added properties, I guess. This new money, yeah, has some new properties to it that like old school money never had, right? Correct. But that doesn't like make it like some sort of like less efficient medium of exchange in any way. Right. Yeah. Now that you like, yeah, we it. live in the digital age. Guess what? There's some embedded digital information to our money. Whoops. Right. Right. <laughs> it's like no <laughs> shit that was gonna happen. You yeah. Know? You could say that fiat currency has art on it too, right? It does. Yeah. It does, right? Yeah. And then it's it's got like a fucking timestamp on it. Yeah. Each each coin dollar yeah. has an ID. It does. Every single one, a unique ID. Yeah. So now you you our our Fungible monies have now become non fungible. Correct. Yeah, they, they're the technically non fungible. Yeah, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. You're ruining my monies. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, money as a concept is it's, it's completely in, a construct, right? It's yeah, just made it, up. It is made up. So, there's no like rules, a d- d- defined like rule set of like how money needs to be. Correct. For human beings to like, you know, fulfill their like economic endeavor. Yeah. So, yeah, that. Bitcoin is going to be fine no matter what. Right? Yeah, agreed, agreed. Yeah, dude. Well, that's that was interesting. Uh, that's that's yeah. good. Any main takeaways from this discussion, dude? It's like, I mean, okay, clearly there's a meta protocol like dispute. Well, that and we're seeing something that the 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 larger majority has not seen yet, and that's the biggest takeaway. 
Yeah, I'm getting a lot of those like the butterflies. <laughs> yeah, like in Where's real time. Where's the gas, dude? <laughs> it's everything. <laughs> I just I got a lot going on in there. It's <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> squirrely, but but yeah, dude, I'm getting. I, it feels man, deja vu. I think is the perfect word. And if you guys want to know exactly what we're talking about, just go watch like our earliest podcast episodes from 2019. Yeah, the ones that are like two and a half hours long. <laughs> That's true. We used to do this for like three hours. Yeah. But yeah, in those discussions, we're like, what's who's going to give a fuck about DeFi? You know, there's yeah, not yeah. even a token. There's right, that. Right. And then like, who's going to care about NFTs and how? What's, when's the metaverse going to take off? Yeah, and I was trying to convince you that Bitcoin was going to 100K in this cycle. Yeah. Oh the yeah. Next cycle, yeah. Yeah, but then we started drawing these meme lines that totally failed. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I don't know. So we've been through a lot. And um I feel like we're about to go through like a crazy Yeah, this one's this is definitely unique. This yeah. bull market. Yeah. We got ETFs coming, dude. Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. Yeah. This is this is a, <laughs> a a factor that has no like historical precedence. Which one specifically? The ETF thing. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> Like, what is that going to do to the price? Is it going to double it? Is it going to triple it? I mean, what what happens? It's going to do something, without a doubt. Yeah. All right. But yeah, I think uh, you guys are in for a treat. This is going to be one entertaining journey. It is. Leading, you know. And yeah, man, we're gonna we're gonna try to, uh, I guess, maintain our enthusiasm throughout. No, not that. Like <laughs> our presence, I guess, along the whole way. Because yeah. at some point, it's going to become. As overwhelming as it already is, like it's going to become even crazy. Many magnitudes more overwhelming in the heat of a bull market, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for us. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. And if you're listening, make sure you watch our YouTube channel because there's a lot of visuals that we've added today. Mm -hmm, as usual. Yeah. And uh, if we miss anything, any market like activity that you guys want us to talk about, let us know in the comment section below. And uh, follow all our Twitter accounts, there's a lot of them. All right. I appreciate you guys, and we'll catch you in the next podcast. Peace.